Historically, polities with access to the sea in Europe, Japan, the United States have established overseas empires, while essentially landlocked entities such as Russia or Germany opted to spread on land and at the expense of their neighbors. The United States started off as a land empire, but fast acquired holdings across various seas such as the Caribbean and oceans such as the Pacific. The disintegration of the British Empire and the rise of Germany and Russia forced the United States to abandon the Monroe Doctrine and directly intervene in European affairs in the course of three globe-spanning wars, the First and Second World Wars and the Cold War. As empires crumbled in the wake of the two world wars, agreements made by erstwhile colonial masters regarding national borders and newfangled nation-states were assiduously observed, defended and zealously preserved by ostensibly post-colonial rulers and regimes. The Cold War was about maintaining these colonialist fixations and about perpetuating imperialist mercantilist confabulations which took little notice of ethnic, cultural and social realities on the ground. The unanticipated demise of the USSR wrecked this precarious equilibrium. Suddenly it became both conceivable and doable to redraw colonial era borders to better reflect ethnic and historical facts. In Europe, Yugoslavia, Ukraine, and perhaps soon in Spain and Scotland. In the Middle East, in Iraq, in North Africa in the wake of the Arab Spring, and as a consequence of any peace process in Palestine. In Central Asia and other parts of that continent, East Timor, the islands disputed by China, Japan, Vietnam and the Philippines, Hong Kong, and soon Taiwan. And in Africa, South Africa and South Sudan, for instance. As a sole superpower in a unipolar world, the self-appointed and exceptionalist cop of the international community, the United States spent two decades, rivers of blood spilled and countless trillions of dollars, in an attempt to stanch this imminent avalanche of geopolitical realignment. To no avail, realizing the unsustainable folly of trying to prop up a zombie world order, President Obama instituted an isolationist foreign policy and military stance in all but name. He withdrew from Iraq and Afghanistan, kept away from an imploding Syria and a besieged Ukraine, and largely left the Middle East to its own devices. The United States has reverted to form, acting as a Pacific power. Yet even Obama's pivot to Asia was still born, as was his alleged newfangled interest in Africa and its prospects. The future would witness the rise of trading nations, economic empires, the likes of Venice and the Netherlands in the 13th to the 17th centuries. Germany, at the heart of the European Union, China, the United States, Australia, and probably Africa would all end up being trading empires. This would be multicultural and multi-ethnic, usually banded together with supranational arrangements. The areas excluded from such commercial economic juggernaut clubs will be carved up according to ethnic, tribal and religious affiliations to yield a patchwork quilt of obscure and obscurantist impossible and backward nether regions.